Awen hits that level 6 mark on the Legion Commander, in combination with YG, you imagine a lot of rotations happening. Try and get that dual damage out. Try to get some, uh, some cores caught out with their pants down. See how they do pull it off, though. I, I should ask you, John. Overall, going looking at both these drafts before the game starts, who do you think came out a bit better off? Hmm, that's a bit tricky to say. Like, there is a lot of potential from both drafts. I think it hangs on that laning phase. Now, which side can execute that laning phase best? I, I really have a hard time just pointing out. I, I want to say Geek Fam is much more stable, much more easy to pull off to get that snowball start. So, if Geek Fam can find that start, then again, the condition for them to do that is a bit easier, then they should be able to maintain that momentum. Especially if they shut down this Chaos Knight, who doesn't play catch up well. So Gia Gia is going to have to have a pretty safe start on lane. Jesus, that is a long one. We'll play to Fenry, obviously contributing to the TI's prize pool. Very nice from him. Bello, going to say hello to Gia Gia. That's really all they'll be doing though, just waving at each other really. Meanwhile, bot lane as well. You see Awen and YG getting rather aggressive with their positioning. They realize with Raven there on the Morphling, he's not really going to be able to do too much to stop them from pressuring on this bot bounty rune. And may give it a shot anyway. They have Mushi there on the Shadow Shaman. Let the Sable available. The GG are going to go for a bit of a fight for those banner runes down at the top lane as well. And he should be able to find one. Zephyr does have the spear available. He is going to go for it, but a nice dodge there from GG. Great prediction. Coming out from him, and I don't mean three bounty runes coming out for the side of newbie early on. Nice little start for them. Yeah, it does give them a slight gold boost, of course. Uh, nothing too significant at this point, but that's going to be extra regen for your mid. Slightly better timing, maybe additional regen for your safe laner. So it's a nice little boost for them. Again, it still remains to be seen how these lanes do execute out. I mean, it's, it's an Axe and Mars duel. This is not something you see too often. But I'm actually looking forward to see how manly you can get in this lane. I mean, CK, Axe, Mars, it's, it's a lot of testosterone right here. <laughs> it certainly is. GG, of course, has that massive base damage with the CK, so... Should not have too difficult of a time getting those last hits off, but it really does also depend on the aggressiveness coming out from this Geek Fam lane, and it looks like they are going to start creep skipping with Velo. So going for that counter helix at level 1. Only problem is, with Fenrir there, on the with, on the Bane, he has that Nightmare, and that's going to make it so the creep will just start walking past you. So Velo, unsuccessful with that first creep skip, we'll see if he can get the second wave going. Fenrir may not feel very safe to, uh, to try and disrupt it while Zephyr's there on the Mars, blocking him in. Looks like Velo will actually get quite a bit of value out of this next creep wave. Yeah, he does manage to pull into that camp as well. So just a bit more gold going away of this axe, and again, it's been so long since we've really seen an axe ourselves, but the fundamentals of the hero are still kind of the same, so you can still pull this off and be a big nuisance towards that enemy team. He'll find the third wave as well, and again, Fenrir falling very low thanks to Zephyr. They just can't really do much about this. You see Gia Gia, he's just focusing on getting those last hits, and he's doing so very well, not really struggling underneath his own tier 1 tower. So we'll have a quick look at the other lanes now. As Triple C is up against nothing to say on that leaner. He is struggling a bit, however. Nothing to say. Really having a fantastic time. 13 last hits, 3 denies on that leaner. And dishing out a hell of a lot of harassment onto S Triple C. Yeah, um, the OD again doesn't do wave clear as well as the leaner does. It can sustain better now with Equilibrium being reworked. Of course, it's just... Gia Gia, top lane, ends up finding the first blood. It was a rather easy one as well. Zephyr, just overextending a bit, trying to protect Velo. Will end up getting stunned up for two seconds by Gia and just really getting right click to death. Have a look at that bot lane as well. Raven on that Morphling, he's having a really tough time right now. Uh, Awen just being able to harass quite a bit and really get those denies off. Of course, as the levels go up for the Morphling, he does tend to have an easier time with those last hits. I suppose, though, without some real support there, 
against the Legion Commander, it really isn't the easiest of lanes to have. And you see right now, I mean, Mushi on that Shadow Shaman, not really able to help against that Legion Commander, or the Io for that matter. And he is just trying to go for those creep pulls. That's really all he can do. The only problem is, though, you have YG there on the Io, continuously stealing that XP. Meanwhile, top lane, however. Bello could be in trouble. Bello's got a two-second stun. The crits coming out from GG do hurt quite a lot in this early uh, early stage of the game, and looks like it won't bother them in the end. They'll start chasing Fenrir again on the Bane, and bot lane now. Mushi going to be in trouble, and will end up falling. Ugh, Awen just ends up finding the kill on the Legion Commander. Newbie now two to zero, slight net worth lead for them. Yeah, and this bot lane is really an interesting part of the game right now because. If you think about it, the combination coming out, the IO Legion Commander combination doesn't really have too much magic damage beyond that overwhelming odds. It's mainly the right click damage coming out from A1, I want to say, and even WayZ. Now, the spirits are up as well, but without that slow, again, you don't really expect the IO to be that much of a menace. I mean, a lot of people have not been banning it out, but it still does the work you need it to do early on in the game. It certainly does. Bello gonna get caught out up at the top jungle. Does get stunned up for another two seconds as well. Again, those crits from Gia Gia just do so much work. Fenrir, he will get the nightmare off. Does a bit more damage, although Gia Gia almost screws himself over. There is a nice call there from Bello to just drag this out a bit longer, but there's the stun coming in from Gia. And that's gonna be your secondary kill for the CK now. And this is getting more and more concerning here for Geek Fam because they are starting to lose out on every single lane. Apart from perhaps that mid lane where nothing to say is still dominating in terms of farm. But if you look at that top and the bot lane, it is all going newbie's way. It fact, definitely is. Zephyr's getting chased down right now by Awin and Weiji again, John. There isn't a level 6 yet on the Legion Commander and Zephyr does get a nice spear off at the very least. But he might still Ooh. die. Overwhelming odds do yeah. connect, and the right click from YG will end up finding him. Again, this laning disaster coming out from Geek Fair. You really can't underestimate the damage coming out from these two heroes, and the fact that they can sustain themselves forever. You teeter up on that Legion, again, as you mentioned earlier on from the draft, press the attack onto that IO, and suddenly both of you are healed up to max. It's just too much sustain coming out, and you really can't apply the same amount of pressure as new B is, frankly. It's just a matter of whether new B can actually continue this aggression throughout the mid-game and just keep Raven shut down on that Morphling. Of course, they do have the tools there with the jewel available very, very soon, but see how much use they make of it. Meanwhile, SCCC mid lane does end up getting taken down. Zephyr got a very nice spear off, and it really only took nothing to say a Laguna Blade to get the job done in the end. So, at the very yeah. least, some nice consolation for Geek Fam, understanding their Lena is doing great. Yeah, again, this is the one lane that Geek Fam is winning quite handily. Nothing to say, having a great time down mid, although it looks like they are trying to get aggressive Venerer in the it's range not, for Nightmare. Gets it off. It's not the longest duration, though. Nothing to say. We'll go into the Roshan pit, and do they have a way to cancel this? S Triple C oh, was not actually in range for the Astral Imprisonment. That would have been even worse for Geek Fam had they found that massive Lena kill, but they will not. Yeah, and that does drag the supports of Newbie away from the side lane, so that actually does relieve some pressure off for Geek Fam as well, Raven. Not having to deal with that infinite sustain from Newbie's lineup. Although, again, Wasey just TPs in. And you have that same issue again, you can't really do much about this. Awen just moving forward, gets a few right clicks off. Also that spam ability, like that overwhelming odds, just being able to max that up and throw it out every single time you feel like it. YG will just be there to heal up your mana back to full anyway. It's going to be so frustrating for Raven. He even went and got himself some very early raindrops to try and contest this, though Awen, look at the aggression coming out. Meanwhile... Mid lane, nothing to say, does claim a very early T1 tower, so again, another little positive coming out of this mid lane. I mean, nothing to say really is getting everything for the side of Geek Fam right now and really keeping them in this early game. 
definitely is, and we were talking about heroes that fall behind if they don't get that early start. OD is actually one of those, they don't really flash farm too well, although bot lane. Oh, Awen ends up easily fighting Mushi with those overwhelming odds, and there's just no chance of killing him. Not with YG there. The Zephyr now coming in to try and find a bit of a rotation. He won't find the spear that he wanted. And they did rotate nothing to say on the Lina as well, and although he is still farming up the jungle, that does create even more space for SCCC now to try to catch up on that OD. So, a bit of an error there from Geek Fam. They don't find anything out of that rotation. They do Radiant give Newbie more time. Yeah, and that does give Newbie, again, a chance to reset as well. The Shrines are up if they opt to use that. But it doesn't look like they will be. And just going to have Oasey maybe find other ways of uh, getting his mana back up before hitting back in lane. But while all that happens, Gia Gia in this Chaos Knight up top has been left completely alone. So he's farmed up. He's had his good start. He has his power treads and armlet now. So he's actually ready to fight. Certainly is. You saw there was a bit of a rotation there from Geek Fam. They thought about making the jump onto Gia, but really no way to close the distance. Even if they do anyway, I, I don't think they can kill him off at this rate. You're going to need at least this Lena there to help try and burst him down, but... Nothing to say. Understanding the importance of himself right now in this game, just continues farming up, wants to find that Yules before he actually starts making rotations himself. Oh, here we go. Top lane. Did you? He closed the distance. Ooh, not quite. The Bane of CK's existence, John, that reality rift always gets cancelled with the Fog of War. And GAG does not end up finding that reality rift on the axe. So this time around, Velo does show himself again. Does get the call off as well, but now they'll just jump in. Why she's there? In fact, they'll leave Velo be. Meanwhile, Jewel is there down at the bot lane. They actually found Zephyr. They won't get the kill down before the jewel wears off and now Awen could be in trouble he's going to be chased down but they do find Zephyr on the Mars Raven can't really get the job done with the Allegiant Commander looks like that'll make it a 1-6 to six now 1k net worth lead for the side of the Dire uh, Gia Gia actually jumps in by himself apparently I mean he, he got the reality rift onto Velo he didn't know nothing to say was around, but even if nothing to say wasn't there, I'm not sure why you'd play that game. It's it's an axe. You don't have your illusions up. That's right next to tier one. Just seemed a bit greedy coming out from our CK. Certainly will cost them that T1 tower going down. A1 forced to rotate over on the Legion Commander, and they do have more rotations here from the side of New B. There's Triple C. There will be a jewel coming out. They won't find the jewel damage, but they should be able to find the kill. Although, more further south, they do get the Fiends rip off onto Nothing to Say, and that is the much more important target. They will claim the Lena's life. They'll let Velo essentially escape, but again, they, they got the better target in the end. Now relocate. Or relocate back, I should mention. That mm. will allow them to defend that T1 tower down the bot lane as well. Again, we just did it a 2-7, to seven, a slow game from both sides. It does just seem to favor new B. It definitely does. Again, they still are finding the farm on their course. I think the one thing that really stands out to me right now is that Raven is still having a rough time. He's at 3.9k, and he's actually behind that OD, which, you know, SCCC didn't have a good start. It looks like for Geek Fam. Raven has had a worse start, and that's not good. He's going to have to play in that jungle for a while. He does have his Morbid Mask up, so he can sustain here. It's just, it's probably not going to be... I mean, we're not going to see this Morphling up and active in these teamfights until maybe the 20-minute mark. That's usually standard when you are this far behind. Well, on the brighter side of things, Velo, he does pick up that Blink Tag on the Axe, and it looks like they want to make use of it straight away. They do smoke up. Of course, they have the Arena of Blood as well as the Laguna Blade available. Nothing to say. So there's some great burst potential if they find a nice target. And SCCC may get caught out right now. He's not expecting this though. Blink! It wasn't on point. SCCC, a nice dodge from him. Now the dodge on the Laguna... Oh, excuse me, the Light Strike Array as well. Arena of Blood being dropped down as well just to ensure they can get out. But look at Gia Gia. He's in the back there with YG. They'll get Zephyr. Velo will be chased down now as well. He doesn't have the stun available yet, but he will very, very soon. 
and it looks like he is committed to this kill, though there is a nice blink coming out from Velo just in the nick of time. Though look at bot lane, as Triple C almost down, but not quite, and now nothing to say, getting caught with his pants down. He gets taken out, and they get Mushi as well. They can't even get the OD kill. He was so close to dying, John. He walks out with 60 HP. But when you've got that IO against you in this game, you cannot go for those kills because the relocate can come out at any moment. I mean, that was just nuts. SCCC lives true with 40 HP at his lowest. Surrounded by the ward, surrounded by Lina as well. I don't actually know how he managed to escape there alive, but nonetheless, this is the aggression that you really want to see from UV. You need to see that CK come out every single time from Tassim's out, force a fight like that, and just clean up quickly. Now, granted, one positive is, of course, that bot enough time for Raven to just farm around the map again, but they're gonna lose their tier 1 down bot now. Well, no. Not quite yet, but they are still setting up there. Ooh. Always looking for a duel onto Velo. Velo, though, does walk away and does have a Blink Dagger available if he needs to Blink. Top lane. Nice. Spear onto Fenrir, though. SCCC moving in onto Zephyr. They will see Raven there on the Morphling, but they are gonna rotate in. They want that dual damage onto Zephyr, and it shouldn't be too hard to find it either. The whole crew of New B do rotate, do find a very easy pick off, and again, we'll just go straight back to farming. Yeah, I really like the response coming out from UB. They just keep going for all these kills that happen under Shrine, happen under their tier 1s. It's really curious to me to see that Geek Fam is stretching themselves very far in without the wards to back up these movements. And without the heroes to really make sure it's safe, it, it, it's kind of greedy on their part to walk into that jungle with no wards. No sort of information as to where newbie would be. And staying by these TP points as well, it's just very easy to punish. What we're seeing right now, John, is the IO effect, as I like to call it. <laughs> nobody really used to playing this hero anymore. You... Bello, gonna TP up to the top lane. It looks like Raven may have made a jump there. Onto Fenrir, but Fenrir and SCCC do back off the safety. A1. Gonna have a blade mail up in conjunction with that blink dagger he already has very soon. Still the net worth remaining just in the lead for newbie, but not that much. And nice blink out from A1. YG will tether away as well. Arena of Blood means absolutely nothing. <laughs> That is actually ridiculous, that you can teeter out of it just like that. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> I mean, that that's a big ultimate going away for a minute 10 seconds for Geek Fam. That's a huge opening for Yubi if they opt to even take advantage of it. But instead, they're just going to farm a massive, massive stack. It is pretty darn huge. All that farm and XP. Going to the cause of New B once again. They just don't want to allow the side of Geek Fam to find this stack and steal it for themselves. Gia Gia. Look at that CK now getting very close to picking up that full BKB. Just needs the recipe. He's going to have it at about 6-700 gold. I look back over to Raven on that Morphling. He is trying to finish off a Lincoln Sphere right now. At the very least, he does have the ultimate orb available, but... Even when you do have that Lincoln Sphere up, it, it doesn't really add that much value to the Morphling. It's more of just a defensive item that's going to allow me to farm up a bit more safely. Perhaps I can initiate into a team fight with my team, but more than likely, even once that Lincoln's is up, you're probably going to spend another 10 minutes trying to farm up before you can actually engage with your team. Definitely so, but they are going to smoke up and at least try to get that aggression on as perhaps they feel a bit pressured with how far behind they are. Again, they are smoking in without any sort of deep They're going to find Gia. Nice call from Velo. They found exactly what they wanted. Gia cannot survive the damage. And you beat. I was thinking about jumping back in, but this is a very dangerous position for them. That is exactly what Geek Fam needed to do and... I mean, they really got one of the better targets that they could have hoped for. With that, they are going to start pressuring that bot T2 tower as well. And I believe for the first time this game, the net worth does finally swing the way of Geek Fam. It definitely does. They don't even expend the wards in that push. They just managed to right-click it down. And they do manage to pull away safely as well. Um, unless, of course, we see a cheeky play from Awen. Oh. Hello. Uh, Hello. Call is there. He does have the blink in a few seconds, but... 
Oh, you can't actually blink out of there, and now the duel comes out as well, but there's no real follow-up quite yet. Just trying to hold him in place. In the end, he is just going to be able to walk out of there safely. With that, 4-12 to 12 now. Again, the net worth just remaining very, very even for this game, and... I've got to admit, there is a few FPS issues. I'm not sure if it was just me, John, but it looks like Velo's having a similar issue. No, I've, I've been dropping frames as well. I'm not sure what it is, but... It does feel like my... I'm, I'm not getting as much rendering power as I should be, which is strange. But I have been noticing that as well. It's uh, not a very comfy experience, mind you, but it does happen. You know, I want to go back to talking about that fight. It was very strange how Newbie responded there. I, I guess they were going for that ward move as GeekFam was going for that smoke gank. So we, we see that ward being dropped in that pillar. And I think that's, uh, that's what they were really going for with the IO there. And unfortunately, that's just the wrong time, the wrong place to be in. So they lose two big heroes with kind of no real reason to. Um, still though, again, that's a great opening for Geek Fam. They took out that tier two down bot, and that does buy a lot for our Morphling. Raven actually having a decently good time now, a 7.5k net worth. Only about 600 behind the Lina, and just about, I want to say, uh, what is that? Like About 1,300 behind the Chaos Knight. Now, the draft of newbie has a very sharp timing, right? Like, at some point, the Chaos Knight actually tapers off hard. So you really have to play this early on and really aggressive early on to try to find that advantage for yourself. And we do see a smoke coming out from newbie to that effect. Well, they just picked up the BKB on the CK as well. So it's going to be that surprise reveal, the 10 second charge. Of course, perfect timing for the game to start lagging as well, though they do find nothing to say, but... They weren't really in range to get the reality rift off, and now nothing to say. Being a bit cocky about this, Jewel comes out and the relocate in the back line. So nice arena of blood to keep him out. They've got nothing to say down, and now Bello, he jumped in, but it's all too late. Although Awen is dropping rather low, it won't be enough. Raven, he'll end up getting Fenrir, and he'll morph into Gia Gia. But they do end up losing two cores for the price of a support. UB, again, going to be very satisfied with that. Definitely so. It, it, these are the kills they really wanted. They wanted to get a grip on Velo, get a grip on that Lina. And they find those exact targets. Now, it was still a bit messy overall. Like, that fight was not clean coming out from UB, but kills are killed. It just means they don't transition to an objective. I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm kind of considering reconnecting here because the lag is getting a bit weird now. I'm just scared that if I do disconnect from the game, it may not let me reconnect. Because this does tend to happen sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it does. I guess write it out for a bit longer if it really does drop into like single digits or low tens. I, I guess that's when you are forced. Like, is, is it really bad? Like, you, yeah, you uh, well, hold on a minute. Oh. Top lane, Gia Gia. Nice dodge on the call. It's not really bad. I mean, it's just... I'm just thinking about the viewing viewing experience right now, John. It's just... Uh, it's that classic Australia to China server connection. Not the greatest for us, unfortunately. Not the greatest for you either, of course, in the Philippines, but... We'll see. We'll make it work. Bot lane. You do see YG tethering that siege creep, John. And, of course, this is a nice little strategy to really burst down that T1 tower. He will eventually disconnect himself from... The Siege, Creep, and meanwhile, Geek Fam. Doing something very sneaky. Realizing the newbie have no Roshan wards, they are going to try and sneak this. Apparently, newbie have absolutely no idea this is happening, and it's happening way too fast for them to even realize. You see Awen, though, moving in. He's got to get in there quick. The Serpent Ward's now being dropped. He should know about this, but I don't think they have the time to react. Hex will be there from the Shaman anyway. Raven will go ahead and pick up the Na an Aegis, and that is a, a little mistake there from Newbie that could cost them later on in the game. I mean, when you're when you're ahead in this game, you can't allow that Roshan to just go down like that. Yeah, it gives way too much back to Geek Fam. It gives them a lot more uh, space to move around. It gives them a safety net on Raven as well, and he already has that Lincoln's up as well, working on to his Ghost Scepter, probably into the E Blade afterwards. So you are giving a bit too much from Geek Fam to play back in. 
Top lane, looks like Bella was thinking about d jumping that by himself, but he would rejoin his team and they'll go for a smoke together. They know where GRG is. He's underneath the Radiant Ward right now. Bello, easy blink call for him, right underneath the Ancients. And with that Laguna, it's an easy burst down. He does miss the Culling Blade, though now Mars actually throwing out the Arena of Blood. They found S-Triple-C with the Relocate from YG. Now the Jewel, though, comes out straight onto that Lena, but Astral Imprisonment comes out from S-Triple-C. Oh my. In fact, no, it was Raven, my apologies, who morphed into the OD. Nice spear there onto Fenry on the Bane. He does end up going down. But a great save coming out from Raven. Just morphing into that OD very quickly, saving his Lena. And just essentially making it so Newbie cannot punish. And it looks like they were going to get a fair bit out of that as well. Yeah, and you know, they still find the kills on... A pretty pivotal core. Again, they are slowing down Geo Geo heavily now in this case for Geek Fam. So, the CK actually not having a great time. He's trying to farm up into further items to boost his damage. But after those early team fights, after those early kills, it doesn't feel like Geo Geo has progressed much at all. Has that blink, or, blink dagger up now? So, it should be easier for him to close that gap. But we're reaching the point where the Morphling starts to come online and the CK starts to taper off a bit. Now top lane, S triple C, gonna get waveformed on, but does manage to blink away just in the nick of time. YG was there in the back lines just in case he needed to relocate S triple C out. You can see Geek Fam suddenly having a lot more uh, confidence in trying to find these pickoffs. It's kind of interesting though, like with the draft that Newbie had or has. You would imagine they would be the ones being much more aggressive. They do smoke up now as I say that. And A1 find a nice blink jewel. It looks like they smoke on smoke. They run in though. Velo, he found the call straight away. Now GG are going to jump in straight onto that Morphling. He burst out Mushi in fact. It was the Shadow Shaman he jumped on. Now A1 gets the jewel off. There's another the Reality Rift. And they will find Zephyr as well. Have they found anybody else? It looks like they were in the Rose Pit. Velo, he can't get away from this one. Or can he? He tries to. But he will not be successful in doing so. Nothing to say. And Raven do manage to get out, at least for the moment. The T1 top tower won't really remain standing here. Awen is there with YG. Oh, Geek fam, they tried to get aggressive, but... I suppose when all the chips fall, the way Newbie wants them to, it is a very easy and clean team fight for them. Yeah, the key thing for Geek Fam is to get that jump onto Gia Gia. Well, they caught Gia Gia, John. Like that. Laguna Blade coming out. Yeah, they'll take him out. S Triple C. Gonna try and find a trade here, though. He gets stunned up as well. Raven, he'll just turn around. Though now a jewel comes out. Nothing to say. He gets caught with his pants down once again. Will he survive? Surely not. No, he does not. They will end up finding some trades. Although this is not looking great for Geek Fam. Raven now will go Scepter up. Trying to walk away, but he gets caught with the Astral. He went. Luckily for him, the strength morphing is there from Raven. Spear doesn't really connect on S Triple C, but Velo he finds a nice call, and now New B will be the ones to get punished. In fact, Awen he gets Arena of Blood. He's gonna turn around a man fight with the Blade Mail. Though it looks like it will not be enough in the end. Call does come out from Velo. The spear does connect, and they will end up finding four kills on the side of New B for Geek Fam. That so, was extremely greedy from SCCC. He held on to the Santis. He had 44 stacks of int stolen. He did not drop that Santis Eclipse and that might have been enough to at least dissuade Geek Fam from jumping in, but he just ends up dying from the call and that really cost them there. After, after the OD fell, it just started tumbling apart and what looked like a good fight initially for a newbie just kind of ends up being a counterpoint to that gank that they had earlier on. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Well, Geek fam, certainly still in this game, the net worth lead remaining only 1k the way of new B. In fact, you have a look at that net worth craft and it's just kind of been up and down. Really never going anywhere substantial. Dota plus win probability has actually been Geek Fam's way the whole game. 
So Geek Fam still a 61% chance of pulling off this win, which is interesting considering New B have really been more successful in their aggression, but I suppose it just goes back to the heroes the Geek Fam have. You know that Morphling is going to become a real monster in about 10 minutes. In fact, if he's not already, because he does just pick up the Ethereal Blade now. UB, they could find themselves in trouble, although they do get a nice jewel off, and they will find Mushi. Nice sort of bit of jewel damage going there to Awen now. He's on 82 on the Legion Commander. The Geek Fam, they are setting up, up at that top lane to try and catch somebody out. Awen. Careful here. Must know they're in the tree line. He's not moving forward, although no, now he does. Fellow, he'll jump in. There's the Nightmare. They were ready for it. Fenrir, although not ready enough. Arena of Blood does come down. Now the Sanity's in the back lines. Raven, he's the target. Can they burst him down? Yes, they can. They got the Fiend's Grip off onto Zephyr as well, and he is dead. Fellow blinks to the right side, and he'll be okay, it looks like. He'll TP out of there. Geek Fam sticking around with only four heroes, and they do pay for it in the end. Yeah, and that is pretty much the kills that Newbie wants. And that's really what you want to see coming out from SCCC's OD, right? He gets a couple of stacks in, a good amount of int on his way. He drops that Santis and everyone really just melts. So it's something you have to be very conscious about if you're Geek Fam. You always have to be aware of where SCC is, how long has he been right-clicking, and whether or not Santis up, because... Once that drops, I mean, the Axe melts, the Morris melts, even that Morphling melts quite a fair bit. So, SCCC is their scaling, and right now he is starting to come online in a very big way. Geek fam. Just gonna get back to farming, especially while they have Raven down on the sidelines. What's the game plan here from Geek Fam though? It looks like they're almost getting ready to group up and smoke again. There is a smoke on Zephyr and it looks like that might just be the plan. They do. They smoke up. They are going to loop around through the dire jungle. Radiant are scanning. It's their own scan, trying to find somebody close in the tree line and they won't. Oh, Geek Fam, across the other side of the map in a really nice position themselves. By the time UB get there, their smoke may have just worn off. Now they know where Geek Fam is because they do show up on the creep wave, but I don't really see them actually making a play any longer. Though they are trying to bait with that banner up at the top lane, it seems. Velo, he's just going to wait around for a nice blink call. So he goes in, now Fenry spots him out. Geek Fam, do they stick around or do they just run away? It looks like they will opt to run out. Yeah, just a bit of a awkward positioning from both teams. I think Newbie definitely had a better spot there, and they do transition to that tier push quite Ewan. fast. Gets caught out by himself. Fella doing a nice bunch of damage and Ethereal Blade into the shotgun. Does end up working out. Fenry forced the TP away, although no, Raven, he gets another nice shot onto Fenry, and that is two pretty nice pickups there for the side of Geek Fam. Mind you, Newbie, they do manage to find that tier 2 top tower at the very least, but... I was a bit shocked to see Awin even rotate around that uh, that rune spot, knowing that Geek Fam were around there somewhere. That definitely was a bit of a greedy play coming out from Awin, just trying to get it all and gets punished for it. He does drag his Bane down with him as well, but you know it, it's not the biggest loss. You still trade that tier two as you mentioned earlier on, and overall you don't lose your big targets in the OD. You don't lose your CK. I think you're not going to be too unhappy about that as newbie, although again, it's not a very clean way to close out that push. While that was going on, GG, he just went ahead and finished up his heart of Tarask now, so... You've got this really tanky CK, sitting at 4.6k HP while he has that armlet toggled on. Oh, he can just leave this toggled on forever now because of that heart just passively regening him up. Now I'm going to smoke up on the side of UB. Nobody really showing on the map for them though, but they will know that nothing to say is there in the mid lane somewhere. 
It's going to be a 3v4, in fact, 5 situation. They jump in for the duel, but Velo was already there. Now the Arena of Blood in the back. Zephyr just holding back the supports. And, well, they've already lost Mushi, though. It looks like Nubia is still winning this one. Velo, he will end up fighting Fenrir, and now Zephyr ends up falling as well. SCCC joining in on the team fight. They're trying to knock down the CK, but he's so darn tanky. SCCC has the Sanity's ready to go as well. He does Astral up his own CK, and he does manage to blink out Gia Gia. Gonna be safe. In the end, New B, they were outnumbered, but they end up winning the team fight anyway, even forcing out the buyback from Mushi. Yeah, that is a really nice win going the way of New B. They don't expend any of their ults as well, besides maybe Phantasms, but they still have that sense. It's clips to play around, and that means they can still posture for that Roshan when it comes down to it, if Geek Fam does up to get that push going in there again. The one issue is that Newbie, once again, does not have vision in that area. Look at SCCC again. He does have the Scythe of Vice up now as well, the uh, the OD, and that's an item he didn't have in that last engagement. It's only going to make things a lot worse, especially for Raven on that Morphling. He won't be able to waveform or strength morph away. Maybe this time around as well. Not willing to give that Roshan up free. Looks like Velo will just keep eyes on it inside the Roche pit. But he will eventually back off. This is Zephyr as well on the Mars. Does pick up a smoke for his team now. So expect the next team fight probably to be around that Roshan pit. And as we just saw, it does still seem to favor Newbie in the end anyway. But Geek Fam, maybe if they catch somebody up by themselves, it could make all the difference. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. I, I want to point out something interesting with Velo's build, Mike. He went for the attack procs counter Helix, and now he's going to Mjolnir. So, that's some great synergy there and does keep you relevant. Oh, ooh, they caught somebody out. That's a CK. He has a lot of HP, though. He'll BKB up and just run out of that arena of blood. Awen falling rather low himself though. They don't have detection for him. He just stands in there Ooh, waiting for man. it to go down. Now Sanity's SCCC ends up finding nothing to say. Mushi's falling low as well. Zephyr gets out of there safely. Awen literally just stood there in his shadow blade. Now Velo again. A nice jump in with the call, but is it going to matter? It will not. Fenry does end up losing his life, but look at Gia Gia. He jumps in onto Zephyr. Zephyr goes down. Four heroes down with no buyback available on the side of Geek Fam. The only man to walk out of there is Raven. And they just really stand no chance, it seems, against Gia Gia right now. Like, you jump the CK, you throw everything you have against him. He still had about half his HP. Yeah, again, CK has a bit of a timer, sure. He kind of tapers off in that late game. This is still his peak. He just got that heart. And it's a very good timing for him. And now they're going to be able to siege out of high ground. You cannot initiate on the CK like that. You just cannot. He is too big right now. You lack damage on your morph. You lack damage on your Lena to really follow up just yet. And you're just going to lose one set of racks. Maybe even two if they... Nah, there's no other outer tower taken out. So just going to lose that melee racks. And that's one saving grace for Geek Fam that not many objectives to take besides that top although it looks like the rosh is going to be the next target well they'll go for a shrine first just to ensure that they can't tp in to defend that roshan roshan will not be taken quite yet newbie they'll hold out for a bit Geek fam, not really even rotating up to that Roshan pit quite yet, but they might go for another smoke. But it looks like nobody has one. They do scan out the Roche pit, and they did actually catch Gia Gia on that CK, though. Zephyr really doesn't want to show himself right now. UB are ready for this. Gia Gia almost just trying to bait them in. That Invis rune, he does show himself now. They understand from the last team fight. They can't do this again, surely. Ethereal Blade and Shotgun do go out. Velo thinking about it. He does jump in. Although straight away that Astral comes out. Now the Arena of Blood comes out as well. Though SCCC will just turn around and start man fighting. Gia Gia straight on Mushi and does take him out. They at least got A1 on that Legion Commander. Though now they've got to deal with the CK. Can they do the job? There's the Fiend group coming out from Fenrir. Though nice Ghost Scepter coming out for the Axe. Now they jump back in. Four Staff is there. In fact it was a Spear coming out that actually knocked SCCC back. 
a very messy team fight. They do at least, again, find Awen, force out the buyback from that Legion Commander. So it is a nice little win there for the side of Geek Fam. They only lost Mushi in the process, but you see how fast they had to back off after that kill on the Legion. They really could not stick around any longer. Yeah, and you know, one utter blessing for Geek Fam there is that Mushi got the dual win, so he has 26 bonus damage. <laughs> well, there is a duel though. Mid lane, Awen actually ends up fighting Zephyr. Now the reality rift though, they're going after Velo first. Velo falling very quickly and does go down. He does have buyback available. Awen looking for his next target, though. Nice light strike array into the arena of blood. That was absolutely massive. Though, can they deal the damage? S Triple C's gone. Now YG's gone as well. Can they burst down the CK? He's the final boss. They do end up finding him. They even found Fenrir on the Bane. Oh, that is absolutely disastrous for the side of New B. But what a light strike array coming out from nothing to say. He hit four heroes with that. And they go straight into that Roshan pit for another Roshan steal. That was it. Just, just that light strike ray into everything else that came out from Geek Fam. The follow up was perfect. Vela was in place. You had the arena, you know, the arena coming out from the Mars. You had everything you needed from that one spot. And New B just with that one slip up in positioning, one slip up like that, and cost them the Roche, cost them the cheese, and that all of that does go the way of Geek Fam, which means you're gonna have a harder time. It does look like this is the point in game where the CK just kind of withers off you know it's like with the itemization that you have in raven with the levels that he's gained he's now 25 you know this is the time when the ck doesn't feel like it's going to be as relevant especially if they do manage to isolate you completely now UB maybe forced to buy back they really don't want to but they do give up the t3 tower like this and it looks like they're going to give up a melee barracks as well so still remaining confident Enough so that they feel like they don't really mind losing that mid racks, but that may end up costing them later on. Nothing to say. Immediately goes up, clears the top tier 2 tower as well, so now all out of towers from UB are gone. This will open up those shrines now for Geek Fam. Do you, do you feel like they should have bought back to defend that Rax, or do you think it's worthwhile just holding on? I feel like it, it's worth holding on like you definitely need as much gold as you can right now your power spikes are starting to taper off your gold lead is disappearing as well one melee racks is not the end of the world and you still need items to come out into your ck you still need items to come out onto your od oh henry gets caught out arena but is there though nice relocate wow. coming out now, who have they found there? Awen, he got a duel off onto the X. S Triple C just bursts him down, and now Mushi will be the target. The Raven, he'll come in, going after that OD. BKB being popped. Raven will be able to walk out of there. Awen does not have the duel to throw out a secondary time. What a relocate, though, from YG to protect Fenrir on that Bane. That was just some. That was really clutch at that moment. I think we also saw Bane maybe dodging a couple of spells with his Nightmare. I heard the Laguna go off, but, you know, it didn't look like he was actually hit by it. Raven, can I find a double damage on that Morphling? Hitting for just, casually hitting for almost 700 damage per right click at this point. But, unfortunately for him, he may not find a good chance to use it, considering Velo is down on the axe. They will allow that bot T2 to go down for free, and it looks like Newbie will rotate over to the mid lane now and try to claim that final outer tower for the Radiant side. And I don't really see them going in for a team fight without Velo. Just that tanky frontliner that they need to have in these engagements. So, going to be a bit of a costly death there on Velo coming up for Geek Fam. Essentially just mitigating the advantage they just got. Doesn't I wonder feel like Mutant can start. Uh, they can't start in that high ground just yet. Like the Aegis is still up on Raven. You still have the Cheese up. Unless it was expended. No. Cheese still up on Velo as well. So can't really take that high ground just yet. Probably going to have to wait for another opening like that. Probably going to have to wait for your ultimate to get off cooldown. And then force something out again. Otherwise it's going to be a minute where UB just kind of plays safe. 
I love I love the level 25 talent choice from Raven. Just plus three multi-shot adaptive strikes. Sounds very balanced. Raven <laughs> gonna start moving forward with his team now. Let's actually morph into the Shadow Shaman this time around. Let the newbie again. Just gonna focus on farming. S triple C. He'll go ahead and pick up the Lincoln Sphere now. So, at the very least, you won't have that shotgun potential on S triple C. Won't have the Laguna Blade either on him. G G as well. Has an Eye of Scardy up. I thought he was gonna rush that Assault Cuirass before that, but does opt to get even tankier now. There's 5.5k HP on that CK. I mean, this this guy is just way too tick to really jump in again. I mean, again, you can't afford if you're Geek Fam to jump the CK first, even at this point in the game. It and you could probably burn him down, but it comes at a really big cost. So you need to kind of split your attention with SEC now as well. He's the main source of damage coming out from UB, and this is the point where the OD really just kicks it up. Pure damage coming out, 60 seconds more on the Arcane Orb Int Steel, uh, plus you know. Talent multiplier onto that Sanity's Eclipse. It means that OD is going to be the one dealing out that punishment from this point on. See Awen as well on that Legion Commander. Does have this? Does have the other uh, Heaven's Halberd up now? See how useful that is up against Mushi. Oh, excuse me, up against Raven on that Morphling. And of course, even nothing to say on that Lena. Does dish out quite a bit of damage with those right clicks. You be are they confident enough yet to really make a play? Yeah, have a quick look at that buyback status, and one of the problems here is Awen doesn't have buyback all available right now. Nor does he actually have buyback available altogether. He's about 34 seconds away. The same does still stand for Velo as well, though. He's a bit about a minute and a half away, and it looks like they are ready to smoke up. Can they find anybody though? Raven, he does break the smoke though. GG jumps in but gets hexed up immediately. Now the wards have been dropped as well. And I don't think Geek Fam really want to fight this though. No, they've been jumped on S Triple C. He found Mushi. In fact, it's Velo he's going for. Though he's copying a lot of damage himself, but not quite enough yet to take him down. They do find Zephyr on the Mars. Fiend Script is there on Raven. He loses his life. Velo still trying to make a run for it, but they've lost so much on the side of Geek Fam. Three buybacks coming out immediately from the Radiant side. But it all just happened so fast. They got S Triple C on the OD, but he bore back immediately as well. We'll see. Can they claim this mid T3 and Rax now? Knowing that Velo can't buy back for another 35 seconds, he doesn't even have the gold for it anyway. And you have this tanky frontliner in the CK with 5.5k HP just hitting on your T3 tower. They'll back off for a bit. Refresher is smoked up. They are smoked up on the side as well. Sephir is just waiting. See that refresher orb coming out of nothing to say as well. So he has a lot of disable potential there from the leaner. They are going to jump in. Arena of Blood is there. It's a nice one from Sephir as well. Though Raven, he didn't actually find a target. He's going to start right-clicking Gia Gia, but that is not the one you want. Nobody really ends up going down here for the side of UB, and they're just going to go back in for more. Gia Gia doesn't find the reality rift he wanted. And with only 15 seconds left on that respawn for the Axe, they do back off to safety. Yeah, I think they've definitely got as much as they could from that lane, and even if it's just the tier 3, that is a lot to give them as well. Like the next time a fight breaks out, of course, these racks are not going to be holding for too long. And suddenly that quick come about from Geek Fam when they took that melee racks down mid, it feels like it's been completely negated from UB the past few minutes. They've, they're have they starting to find their ground here. They know what to do with Gia Gia now and just throw him in front, be the distraction. Their main damage is really SCCC. Like he is doing an astounding job on this OD. He did have to buy back there, but he's pretty much all set in his itemization. They just need to keep him alive long enough to get maybe around 40 stolen int, maybe a bit more, and then drop the Santis, and then it just drops everyone off from Geek Fam. There is no response to that. It's just going to be a bit too strong. 
coming out here unless you can get that BKB on right in time. Geek fam, how do they push their way back into this game? I mean, it is it still anyone's game in the sense that Raven is still hitting really hard, but just not hard enough, it seems. You have a look at that win probability, and for the first time, or for the second time now, but you see new B, 64% chance of themselves winning this game, and certainly does feel that way. In fact, I feel like that should be a bit higher at this rate, but... And it may just be due to the fact that they have a CK and Legion Commander on their side who probably aren't very uh, very likely contenders to win games. They are definitely doing a solid job, though. They are. And, yeah, at this, it's at this point in the game where you kind of ask yourself, how else can you scale on these heroes? Of course, Raven on that Morphling still has at least one item slot left to play where play around with but you kind of reached the peak of your lena you've kind of uh reached the peak of your axe almost i think he has room for at least that mjolnir if he finishes it up i'm probably gonna skip that crimson guard in that case but go for that mjolnir because he does have that attack procs counter helix that's gonna be your main source of damage now of course pure on that spin so you're gonna be relying on that and with that mjolnir you do have enough attack speed to proc it consistently, so that's going to need to come out. But after that, well, what else is there to scale off of? Your more is, as a support, is not finding that farm, so he's not going to be able to itemize himself. The Shadow Shaman as well is kind of stuck in a rut, just kind of stuck at the items he has right now. It's just Tranquil Boots, two Bracers, and that's it. Yeah, Ghost Scepter as well for protection. But that's really it. That's all you have in Mushi. And... You know, you're going to need to find another way to scale beyond Morphling. And it's a strange thing to say. Morphling is one of those late-game heroes that does exceptionally well. It's just against how a newbie is playing and against how a newbie has been handling this, riding on the back of SCCC while distracting with Gia Gia. It has been paying off quite well. It certainly has. Uh, Korea ends up going down. I'm not even sure where that was, but... Had nothing on it, so not too big of a loss there from UB. Looks like we are going to have a refresher orb coming out from GAG after the Assault Curass, apparently. I suppose at that point, when you've bait your 6 slot, you may as well just start picking up the refresher orb. Just to have that double phantasm available. Hard to know what Geek Fam can really do right now, but they are setting up to jump in onto the side of New B. Can't forget they are missing pretty much all their buybacks. GG almost finding the reality rift he needed on Velo, and it looks like they are planning to reinitiate here from Geek Fam. Henry does show himself for a little bit, but they know he's not the target they want. UB just holding that high ground. They want to try and force Geek Fam up. Geek Fam moving forward though. We have a bit of a, a bit of a stalemate in this team fight. I mean, it, it's almost like the team fight's already started, but both teams just not really jumping in quite yet. Gia Gia, again, just trying to bait them in, but they know exactly where the side of UB are hanging out, and they do opt to back out. Awin. Thinking about jumping in, and he does do so, but does not get the jewel off. Pops the BKB. Rather unfortunate for him now, so he'll have to wait another 60 seconds before they can really try that again. Nice attempt, but quick blink from Velo will ensure they get out. I'd say if you're Geek Fam at this rate as well now, you probably want to go for the team fight right here, right now, while you know that BKB isn't up. But the question is, can they actually find anybody in time? And it looks like the answer is absolutely not. Yeah, it does look that way. They have to kind of deal with these Chaos Knight Illusions as well, who are really tanky. Like, <laughs> that thing's still alive after copying all that damage, and it's just slowing down the waves. It's not giving them the push. You had that moment where Newbie was kind of split up. 
But that moment has passed, and now you have Awen just kind of scouting around. Ooh. Big disconnection Ooh. there from Geek Fam. Everyone Ooh. on the team just disconnects. It's a classic C move, Mike. It definitely is, John, but it's a bit of awkward timing here. I mean, Awen does get scouted out in the shadow yeah, plate. Yeah, because Awen, he was walking under a sentry right here in the high ground. He was within that range. Surely that would have been the opportunity for Velo and Mushi to abuse that or at least jump GIG at the back. But it, it is an awkward spot, to be fair. All these and things happen. rather unfortunate that, yeah, it's unfortunate that the sea curse does happen now. Our blessed ISPs has decided it's time for a bit of a break. <laughs> Maybe an afternoon snack, some high tea, you know, grab some Earl Grey, a couple of biscuits. Refresh yourselves a bit. As the internet... of you, John. Well, it, I, it's a habit I picked up from Singapore, you know. Co you Commonwealth countries and your tea and biscuits and high tea. I don't know if that. We don't have that in the Philippines. We just eat junk. You know, we, we got <laughs> raised the proper way by American colonialism, sir. The only colonialism I care for. Ah, <laughs> uh, not like we had a choice in the matter, John. <laughs> That's fair enough, Mike. Fair enough. Reconnects are coming in slowly but surely. We are getting our interconnectivity back. VPN. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Slowly but surely, one by one. We're only waiting on Velo now on that axe. Already couldn't jump this. They do ping it out as they reconnect. <laughs> that ping out was from nothing to say. It's like, hey, look, it's an invisible, uh, invisible Ewan. Already oh, can react to this, though. You look right behind him, though, John. Look who's standing there. Gia Gia. Yeah. I mean, it's a great opportunity. The only thing is, you don't know where the rest of Newbie are. You've got YG already there with the SCCC, so you have that relocate potential already there. The only man that's not really that close by is Fenrir, but even then, it won't take him that long to walk down, and he can get the Fiend's Grip off from a rather far distance. See, though, this could be the opening they've wanted for a long time now, and they've got plenty of time to think about it as well, whether, as to whether they want to actually jump in or not. Nope. They'll have even more time, Zephyr, disconnecting now. Uh, I mean, that is, you know, VPN sometimes servers can just decide to drop you if uh, something comes up and you don't really do anything about it. You know, one thing I want to point out, Mike, we're at 48 minutes in. We haven't seen the AGs being sented up yet. That is true. That, that is very strange to me because at this point, you usually see at least one hero synthesize their ags, right? Just for a value utility. I think in this case, you could probably expect Alina to do that at some point. Already has that ags, just needs to synth it. Then you throw in the BKB to take that slot instead. But it's just strange. We haven't seen that pop out from a lot of these heroes that are farmed up. Well, Awen is actually going to be the aggressor, though they do hex him up, and Serpent Ward's being dropped as well. The rest of the team going to jump in. Gia straight onto that Shaman, though he doesn't find him quite yet. They do get Awen on the Legion Commander, and now they do find Mushi. And meanwhile, on the back lines, Arena of Blood is there, holding back that IO. SCCC trying to fight back to Zephyr, and does manage to do so, it seems. Who are they actually going to go on? That BKB will wear off on Zephyr, and there's the side device from SCCC. They'll get rid of him. Nothing to say. A nice stun. It will not save him, though. He gets destroyed by those phantasm illusions raven? now the jewel as well with the fiend script straight on to raven he gets taken no out of fellow he jumped back in that's not a great news though for him this is gg they call it they understand it's all over after that there's really no buybacks left on the side of geek fam those pauses they did not end up helping whatsoever for the side of geek fam they 